The team will try to repair this woman's mask. They must piece together the broken fragments made from linen covered with a thin layer of gold. This kind of mask was very popular throughout the Greek period. But there is nothing to indicate whether Tanat Imen is Egyptian or Greek. She could be either. What we see in the Greek period really is that they mixed a lot. They were married to Egyptians, even took on Egyptian names. So for us, it's very hard to distinguish between Egyptian or Greek uh, at that time. Greek influence was strongest among the people living on Egypt's Mediterranean coast. Here, Alexander the Great founded a new capital, naming it Alexandria after himself. But outside this city, many ordinary Greeks embraced Egyptian culture so much, they became almost indistinguishable from their neighbors in death. When the Greek pharaohs came in, they noticed that they can't change the Egyptians. So they decided to just change with them. The Greeks adopted from the Egyptians, but didn't go vice versa. The Greeks bought into Egypt's gods wholeheartedly. They saw them as versions of their own. The king of the Greek gods, Zeus, became associated with his counterpart in Egypt, Amun. There was room for everyone in the Greek heaven. These burials revealed the flexibility of the Greek worldview and the power of Egypt's ancient religion. The Egyptian culture has often been compared to a tsunami. The Ptolemaic Greeks come into Egypt, the Romans come into Egypt, and Egyptian culture is so strong, so traditional, so conservative that boom! The tsunami hits and they are unable to escape being completely drenched in Egyptian culture. So, if Egyptian culture created converts for hundreds of years, how did this extraordinary civilization come to an end? <laughs>